we are close to the celebration of Sri Ramanavami that falls on 1st of April. The 1st of April is Sunday, I believe. I would like to say a few words concerning Sri Ramanavami, the life with Baba. It was uh, in the year 1988, Swami, surrounded by students, materialized a beautiful ring, a very beautiful ring, big size. And uh, it was white stone. And Baba said, this ring is materialized which was presented by King Janaka, the father-in-law of Sri Ramachandra. Janaka, the father-in-law. And he presented this ring to Sri Rama. The presentation of the father-in-law to the son-in-law. King Janaka giving the, presenting the ring to Sri Rama. Watching the mood of Swami, and the gathering, I take some liberties now and then and try to make Swami happy, smile. What I said was, if Sri Ramachandra is also expecting rings from father-in-law, how about we poor human beings? Naturally, we do want more from father's in Then Swami said, what? No, no. Sri Ramachandra is not like that. He doesn't expect from father-in-law. No, no, no. Huh? What do you say? His father also gave him ring. Then out of divine prestige, he metal his other ring with a green stone this time. This is the ring presented by the father. So the father and father-in-law presented two rings to Ramachandra. One green stone, another white stone. To irritate Swami now and then is also quite interesting. Quite interesting. And then he materialized the, the two rings I saw, which are so big, so big. Then I said, what? This size of a ring? Such a big ring, Swami? What? And Baba immediately says, He is not like you fellows, Lilliputs. Ramachandra is beyond seven feet. Tall man. Well-built personality. Ajanubahum, Aravinda Dalai Raksham. Such a personality he has. So he has got that ring. Good. Then next day, I said, I want to see Sita's necklace. He said, hey, don't talk, keep quiet. I said, Swami, I want to see. Hey, no, don't talk. Then what I did was, I made students ask Swami. Swami, Swami, Sita, Sita. Then Swami said, you have got a bad leader, Anil Kumar. He is instigating you to talk like that. Hey. Swami, boy, he says. One day we had been to Mr. Raman's house for lunch. Raman was Advocate General at the government of Tamil Nadu, who has his house on the mountain top in Kodekanal. We went for lunch there. And beautiful swing for Swami. I got all those photos, though I have not, uh, uh, what you call, made them into laminated things to be kept here, beautiful swing Swami, full of flowers and all that, Jula. And Swami was sitting there. I went softly and said, Sita necklace of Swami. <laughs> right. There is lunch there. Wait. Swami. Then he said, all right boys, come here. Then he materialized Sita's necklace. Wonderful. Full of diamonds, full of diamonds. 
and three stones at the center one red one blue and one yellow three stones for all diamonds this is the are you satisfied keep quiet he said swami i let me touch it all right but don't pocket it and he made everybody see that sita's necklace so beautiful we also saw the chain of ravana sura swami mitlays without our asking because we can't ask i want to see ravana then he will say are you ravana for yourself by any chance so he said i will show you what ravana oh a very big chain came up to this up to this all our shivalingas shivalingam all center three stones at the bottom some like a garland for that fellow it's just a chain for me it comes up to this for me just a chain and uh, all our shivalingas and swami said this chain of ravana has 365 shivalingas 365 to worship one lingam a day 365 and three stones again blue yellow and red but they are again in shivalinga form this much of size very heavy even it is given you cannot bear the weight because of the personality of ravana oh yes that also we have seen and another occasion that was the season of ramayana 88 was the ramayana season he was speaking on ramayana every day and one day he materialized a golden deer golden deer that sita wanted and in search of golden deer rama went that led to separation he said it, and that golden deer is still there in our mu- museum swami materialized hanuman also that's also there in our museum that whole season one month he was speaking on ramayana every day and as he was speaking he was acting like ramachandra we feel as if he and rama are one he and rama are one and in while teaching swami has a technique he wants boys also to learn some lessons apart from listening to the story they should also pick up some values how does he teach values when sita was separated rama and lakshmana were in search of sita suddenly jatayu bird dropped a bundle of jewels you know that story and then lakshmana picked up that bundle and started looking at those jewels and then he took these jewels to ramachandra and then he asks do they belong to sita and rama says i do not know i do not know whether they belong to sita or not now swami adds his comment unlike modern fellows who have got the stock of the father in law property how much of property has given how much of jewelry that wife has rama is not like that meaning he wants boys not to be mindful of the properties that they are likely to receive from father in law no 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 rama is like that and then rama says lakshmana do you know the jewels no swami i don't know why i never looked at her jewels i see then what did you look at by i looked at her feet every day why i used to do namaskar so what do you know i know her toe rings i know her toe rings andelu toe rings now he ah these are the toe rings of sita then swami says 
Do Lakshmana and Sita were there. From only three people, Lakshmana maintained that very high standards of ethics and character that he never noticed at the jewels of Sita Mata, his sister Lakshmana. Like that, Swami interprets values while narrating the story to the boys so that they would learn lessons. And uh, Swami also said another thing. It seems Rama and Lakshmana Sita went into the forest and happened to get into a hermitage, Rushyasrama, hermitage. And they were in the dress of saints only. They were not having crowns and all that. Wearing akar robes and like any other saint. But faces are brilliant. Rama's face brilliant. Lakshmana, Sita. So, now Swami says, Sita went and sat among the ladies. Rama and Lakshmana went, sat among the gents. Same procedure in those days also, men on one side, women on the other side. Oh, same procedure, action replayed, very good. And then people started looking at these people. Who is this man with a brilliant face? Who is this lady with a charming face? They came to her, all other ladies. Good to see you. Is your husband also here? Sita said yes. And they were pointing out, is he your husband? She says no. Is she your husband? No. Finally they have shown Rama. Is he your husband? She bent her head. Now Swami says, So long is that God, is that God, no, 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 no. When you, start, when you face God, face to face, you have no answer. You are speechless. You are wordless when you encounter God face to face. This is philosophy. Because he comes to experience. You cannot show him. And then Swami adds another lesson. Sita unlike modern women, did not say, Rama, my husband, get up, get up. She did not say. Only modern girls say that. Like that Swami was interpreting whole Ramayana, that season 88. As I think of Sri Ramanavami, I remember those beautiful moments with Swami. <laughs> How he cared for me, my first visit in the company of Swami, in all closeness, in all closeness. I never knew that Swami would, some, would come so close to us. I know it, today it looks like a dream. We had been to Wuti, a very cold place. I come from Pakka Guntur, very hot place, a place of chillies and cotton. But Wuti is a very cold place. And I was there in that room and Swami said, this is your bed. Okay. And then Swami didn't keep quite there. Lie down, he said. Then I, here is your blanket. Cover your body. Are you comfortable? Swami, I am comfortable. After five minutes, Swami again comes into the room. Is it warm enough? No, no, it's very cold here. Are a boy, get some heater for Anil Kumar. They kept heater. Then after 10 minutes, again he came. Or is it warm? Sol? No, no, no. They are still feeling cold. This is my personal blanket, which I use. This I give. Come on, lie down. He covered the body. And which is in biscuit color, with a deer at the center. Very soft. Amount. And how do you like it? Swami, very nice. Then it's good night, good night. Then he leaves the place. How to believe it true? How to believe it to be true? I am not able to believe it now. It all appears to be cock and bull story to me. But that's all 
true. First time I had exposure, first time face to face Swami, living with him, how he showers love. And I got the habit of drinking coffee at five o'clock in the morning, first cup, right from my childhood. What to do? Swami's breakfast time is 7.30. I should have five o'clock. So what I did was, I went into the kitchen. I got introduced myself to those cooks. There are two cooks, one is Sai Krishna, other fellow's name I don't remember. Those two cooks are from Anantapur. Uh, they said, uh, they were very happy that uh, Anil Kumar is talking to cooks and all that, they are very happy. Then I just asked, when do you get up usually in the morning? They said, sir, we get up at 3.30, 4 o'clock. Why? Sir, breakfast has to be ready. We have to make breakfast for all these people. Are right, then how about your coffee, huh? Sir, we make our coffee and drink first and then start our work. Make one more extra cup from tomorrow. One more. Like that, <coughs> I managed to have that extra cup of coffee morning 5 o'clock. Something like a black market. Unofficial. After four days, Swami sat on the chair. He called that cook, all right, come here. All are seated there. That cook came. All right, what is our breakfast time? 7.30 Swami, right? What do you serve? Tiffin and coffee. Uh -huh. But you are serving coffee to one fellow at 5 o'clock in the morning. Is this your grandfather's property? I'll kick you out, useless fellow. He shouted at him. Then I was in jitters. First time being close to Swami. Then I said softly, Swami, it is I that drink coffee every day like that. It is not his mistake. Then he looked at me and laughed and said, Why do you drink coffee so many times? Then he said, no, no, if you drink more and more, you will be dark in complexion. Don't drink so much, you know? two cups are enough. And turned to that cook and said, you serve me coffee this time, as many times he asks. You will follow my instructions after this trip. Now you be as usual and call the cook, serve him coffee as many times as he wants. A permanent instruction given to it. What a lovely period it is. What a fountain of love, the flood of love. And the food served was so soft. In Tamil Nadu, they don't eat hot stuff. Brand diet, but little better. The Karnataka is much less. And uh, I was feeling difficulty. Then Swami said, Anil, there was nothing to eat here. What to do? Swami, hey, don't worry. I brought two pickle bottles for you. Are right, boy, bring from the kitchen. They brought two pickle bottles. Sir, sir. He served me. And then he said, All right, you can serve me also a little bit to keep company with him. <laughs> so, every day Swami and I had some pickle every day. Who will care for us like that? Who will care to know our habits? Who will care to love as much of love that we have not received? from our parents or from anybody. And one day, he gave me a shirt, Philippines, made in Philippines, a shirt. And usually I wear stitched garments. I don't wear ready-made shirts in those days. And suddenly Swami gave me that shirt, 
come on where he said in the hall before everybody where where swami how can i wear this here all boys are here where what is there so i'll go to my room and wear and next swami was sitting here next is my room then i went in i didn't know they put so many pins there i didn't understand that it was taking time come on come on come on come on swami says that what am i to do some i wore the shirt partly and came out swami laughed loudly are 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 ah then he called two boys take him inside help him remove those pins <laughs> lovely lovely so such a sweet god such a sweet lord and i am not able to digest the fact that i am away from him impossible impossible he has gone into the blood bone and marrow of our body impossible so many jokes like that and some kurma so they make some kurma other things uh during breakfast or something like kurma stuff full of condiments and all that i am not used to that smell i am not eating he came there and said eat same then he says see a devotee brought it here if we don't eat the devotee will feel so bad that whatever they prepared is not so tasteful so they will feel bad taste taste ask them to serve a little taste every item huh? you should learn that swami teaches them table manners and all that ha huh? to all boys also sometimes one fellow while i am talking in a family informal way hope you don't mind that while eating <laughs> some rice particle was there on the lip of one student is msc boy swami cannot say useless fellow you don't know how to eat that's not nice bro. swami saw that <laughs> see that huh? <laughs> that fellow got the message immediately without hurting anybody without hurting anybody and in those days i think it was uh, 89 i believe the first summer course we were sitting on the dais suddenly i didn't know that i got my leg like that usually this what our habit i didn't realize it swami <laughs> put the legs down huh? <laughs> <coughs> so soft so nice so delicate so sensitive is bhagwan so sensitive bhagwan and uh, i have got some fascination for dress from my college days because i am from a christian college where dress is the discipline dress is the discipline because we cannot offend other society we should be presentable as nicely as possible more so as a teacher so many students watch us i cannot put a castrile face and it's not like that so one day i wore new suit swami looked at it and said mm emi what is importance today then i said swami today is a tamil new year then he said ah so you are andhra fellow you are from andhra why do you have new dress i said swami having come to you we celebrate all festivals doesn't matter whether it is vishu kerala or tamil whatever may be all are important are bluff master huh? <laughs> i know 
you are expecting that Swami will give a discourse. When Swami gives a discourse, he will wear a new suit and all will see that. Ah, I know, ah, I know. <laughs> then immediately Swami said, no, no. I can speak Tamil, you know that? I can speak fluently. Translation is not necessary. New dress waste too. I'll speak. <laughs> then after five minutes he said, since you are already ready with the dress, come on, let us have translation. But, this is Tamil Nadu. MJ says this. Many, many villagers are here. They don't know English. So what we shall do is, I will speak in Tamil, Telugu. Major General Mahadevan will translate into Tamil. You translate into English. Today we will have two translations. One Tamil, because it is Tamil Nadu. Another English, because of the new dress. <laughs> Can, would you believe all that true? I am not able to believe all that to be true today. Because that has gone into the history. But one thing is this. That which keeps me alive still. Only this. The memories. Memoirs. Reminiscences. Glimpses of the divinity. That made me so happy.